might mean to you. It could be anything. Literal, metaphorical, something to do with the memory perhaps. What does it mean to you? Is it somewhere you safe keep your keys? Or try to slide your phone before you realize that half of it is sticking out? Or is it a place where your hand automatically tries to find but fails nearly every time? Is it somewhere you store your confidence? Sunshine? Maybe some tears? Or your insecurities? Don't we all miss our pockets when we're at the airport and have to open our bag to keep our phone as we juggle our suitcases? I guess we all do. Not having this essential element is of course something all of us women miss, but we still continue to buy those jeans with tiny pockets. Pockets which are half the size of men's pockets. Let's be honest here. While you were getting dressed today, if your clothes had pockets, weren't you excited? Or to the least, I'm sure you noticed it. The fact that we get excited with pockets in dresses is a testament to the gender gap and the prevalence of patriarchy. Evidently, it spares no one. Clothes do face the brunt of it. Several YouTube videos show us hacks to add pockets to our clothes. In movies, we've seen essentials being concealed away into blouses. And of course, time and again, almost every day, we've watched our grandmothers and mothers look for their keys and phones every 15 minutes because their six-yard saris couldn't afford a pocket. Everyone has their chore pocket, their own secret ones, for themselves and their own essentials. We clearly know that we need it. The world and the fashion industry too is aware of this. But yet, it's usually eliminated, not given a thought. There was a time when, of course, pockets didn't exist for men or women. But as the Victorian era approached, men and women started using fanny packs or tying strings around their waists, which had small sacks attached to them in which they kept their essentials. This was what led to the concept of stitched pockets, which were added to the inner linings of the garments during the tailoring process. The Second World War's poor economic conditions increased the demand for utilitarian wear. Hence, men and women now had several pockets in their clothes. Post the World War, the world strived to become a more equal place with women entering the workforce. And that was when Christian Dior made his debutante into the fashion industry with the launch of The New Look by translating his ideas of femininity onto his designs. The hemlines were again pulled low, the shoulders made waspy, the waists were clinched, and the hips and bosoms were amplified. The hourglass shape that Dior strived to achieve did not allow extra layers of lining, as the fabric was meant to cling to the body, hence bidding pockets goodbye. Now this was just it. It wasn't that, you know, it was something that the architecture of the garments didn't allow. It was because he felt that men had pockets to keep things in, women for decoration. This handed out importance, independence, economic privileges and freedom to men while distancing women from the working world as he successfully defined his version of the word femininity. Fast forward 75 years, I sit in my drawing room, surfing the net and stumble upon an article shedding light on the history of pockets in women's wear. This was when I met Coco Chanel, when she wasn't just a name which was stamped upon several buildings. When I met her as an activist, a change maker, a feminist and an icon. She abhorred Dior and was quick to take up any opportunity she got to refute his ideologies. Her rebuttals pointed fingers directly at him as she said, Dior doesn't dress women, he upholsters them. Even though these weren't enough to stop the hemlines from falling, her statements were delivered boldly as she strove to normalize the pantsuit for women. 
Drawing inspiration from this icon, I was enthralled by the prospect of accompanying my mother, a fashion entrepreneur, to her office. Since a young age, I've always been enchanted by the power of an office attire and have always envisioned myself wearing those important looking shirts with perfectly coordinated office pants and coats while walking through the corridors with a sense of purpose and responsibility. Now I must step outside this fantastical world and return to reality. So clearly the prospect of a work environment thrilled me and was promising as it would teach me at every step. And I felt an opportunity arise and I finally got the chance to work alongside my mom who in my eyes is the most inspirational and strong woman I know. A month into it, and we were deep into its clutches. We spent hours ideating, creating mood boards, sampling, just getting ready for a new look, a new collection, something fresh. While it's jumbled in the process, I was inspired by the shapes of leftover fabrics in my mom's workshop, and serendipitously, I spun a few pieces of what I later identified as the pocket collection. These were created with multiple bits of fabrics and these were created with multiple bits of fabrics whose central pieces had already been used to create outfits. It was fun to match fabrics and work on a crunch, knowing that I had to make do with the amount I had and I wouldn't get any more. That spurred my creativity. These fabrics were the leftovers, but none of it was waste material. If not used to make clothes, they were used to make accessories which were essential to Indian clothing. Now within the span of a month, I had 15 power pocket outfits ready. Initially, I decided to launch these as a sustainable collection meant to empower women and named it the Pocket Collection. But as I delved into this further and started noticing pockets, and of course, the absence of pockets, I realized that this wasn't enough. Brands such as Kieran Finch, Abraham and Tagore, Fab India, amongst several others, had already been stitching pockets into women's wear and equating them to equality to promote functionality. Some Indian designers such as Anamika Kharna and Parun Tehliani had also added pockets to their wedding lehengas. So adding pockets clearly wasn't a new idea, a sort of invention or something which other designers hadn't done before. This was when I perceived the whole pockets equals to equality concept on a more global scale. I realized that only if designers collaboratively started stitching pockets into women's wear would it actually make a difference, would it actually empower women. This was what led to the birth of the Mary Pocket Movement. The aim is clear. It's to instill a pocket full of confidence in each woman's stride by encouraging brands to make pockets a statement make it a mandatory element which promises functionality. To embrace the pocket as a symbol of financial freedom, as a reserve, a sanctuary where valuable items are kept. I also realized that in my mother tongue Hindi, each object is given a pronoun. And can you guess the pronoun that was given to a pocket? It was Mera pocket, that of a male. Coco Chanel inspired me to normalize the ring of Mary pocket that of a female pocket, just as she had done with the pants suit. When empowered, powerful women joined the movement and shared their pocket stories with us by reflecting and remembering their school days when their skirts had pockets and compared and contrasted it to their outfits today, the distinction was way clearer. So the standard nine inch pocket in menswear holds more significance than it is given, especially for women. Because when you don't have something, that's when you actually miss it. For all the men out here, it's probably hard to relate, as you can't possibly miss something you've had since the day you were a toddler. But I do feel you too face the consequences. Aren't you subjected to keeping your wife's, girlfriend's or sister's phone in your pocket all the time? So I'm here saying, you won't have to miss it anymore. Thank you.